Good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. We're going to start in our state's largest city that's facing some litigation. The city of Minneapolis is no stranger to lawsuits in recent years with a lot of high publicized and high figured settlements connected to police misconduct. But there's a newly filed lawsuit that's accusing the city of racial discrimination and rental housing code enforcement. Kent spoke to one of the plaintiffs today and he found out that the goal of these pla plaintiffs isn't money. So you can kind of see how it's like chipping right here. During her eight years renting this North Minneapolis home, all this leaks. Ariana Anderson felt like she and her family were constantly fighting a losing battle. Walls would just crumble with their landlord. My children were exposed to lead, mold, uneven foundations, heat emergencies in the dead of the winter. I just really got to my breaking point. And Anderson eventually moved out of Minneapolis because she felt like she wasn't just fighting, her landlord. I contacted the city and I don't feel like the city really had staff to support what I needed from them and that was to get behind me, support me, make sure that my landlord is doing what they need to do. She is now one of 10 plaintiffs from across North Minneapolis alleging that the way the city approaches rental housing code enforcement here amounts to racial discrimination. There are far more housing code complaints from North Minneapolis, and yet the city chooses to assign roughly the same number of housing inspectors to that neighborhood as other neighborhoods in the city where there are fewer housing code complaints. That's racial discrimination because this is also the area of the city with the highest percentage of individual renters who are um, people of color. Attorney Ben Kappelman is talking specifically about the areas encompassing wards four and five in the city. Despite being home to roughly 16 percent of Minneapolis residents, he cites city data showing the area accounts for 45 percent of rental complaints in the last five years. The same data also appears to indicate 85 to 88 percent of those complaints were resolved. Our individual plaintiffs from their experience know that that's not true, that they are making complaints to the city that are marked resolved in the system, but they haven't seen a resolution in their neighborhood. There was an incident in 2018 where I had the city come out to check my house for lead. He went in my home, he checked one wall, and he told me, there's no lead in here. I'm sure because I know the people who own this house, they're great people. They would never do that. After she and other tenants organized a few years later, she says the city did come out again and confirm the presence of lead. And though her family has since moved on, she says this lawsuit isn't about money. It's about enacting change for whoever moves in. I would like for them to hold these uh, landlords accountable. This is really about getting the court to force the city to change, to change the way it staffs its housing inspectors, to change the way it enforces the housing code, and make sure that North Minneapolis is getting the same public services that the rest of the city is getting. A spokesperson for the city of Minneapolis sent us a statement this afternoon saying that they're still reviewing the complaint but denying that the city discriminates against BIPOC renters. It goes on to say the city works cooperatively with landlords to try to remedy issues on rental properties in order to protect tenants, minimize the loss of low-income rental housing, and avoid displacing residents. Jana?